The Bride Has Come of Age, Part 1 On the 8th of June, 2022, I documented in my prayer journal these words I heard the Lord say in my spirit. Mike, I am summoning you to come before me, but come alone. It was a defining moment in my life, although back then I had no idea the impact my obedience to his calling was about to make to me personally. For a while, I had felt the Lord drawing me into a deeper place with him. I knew there was somewhere beyond the veil I had been invited into, but I also sensed this transition, this passage to the other side of what I could only see dimly, would require absolute surrender. I took comfort in the Apostle Paul's own testimony, who recounted, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Philippians 3 verses 7 to 8. And so, that's what I did. I laid everything down, every role and responsibility I once held to truly be alone with him. Having nothing to offer except my heart, in extended periods of solitude and stillness, listening to his heart and being restored by his love. As painful as they may be, times like these are essential for our spiritual well-being because without them, we would undoubtedly persist in an outdated framework of thought or circumstance with no means to divert into new streams of revelation or direction which are imperative if we're to fulfill our destiny and be ready for the days ahead. There's so much the Lord has for us, so much more we have yet to receive impartations and activations are ready to be released as he calls us to posture before him in ways perhaps we have never done before. I'm sure you'll agree how difficult this actually is to do, but there are untapped reservoirs of grace awaiting those who determine to pursue him further with a relentless hunger to venture beyond the veil. Now, it's one thing to let go when what we hold onto is no longer productive or needed, but a far greater test of faith to abandon something still fruitful or valued by others. Yet, John 15 verse 2 teaches how it is those very fruit-bearing branches which are the ones pruned to be even more fruitful. Painful, yes, but oh, what sweetness awaits us there abiding in the vine. A rare intimacy with Yeshua, surpassing anything of this world we might treasure. I needed to be postured like this because something of enormous impact and implication was about to be decreed from heaven, I had to be ready to hear and receive. Exactly three months later, on the 8th of September 2022, Queen Elizabeth II died whilst residing at Balmoral, Scotland. As the nation mourned with a profound sense of loss difficult to articulate, deeper than the emotional outpour was a spiritual turbulence many experienced and sought to understand. I inquired of the Lord during those days to discern the prophetic significance of the Queen's life and death and was astonished by the revelation that came. 
I released a commentary about this during the official week of mourning, but rather than take time here, I encourage you to refer to the commentary because it explains a significant connection from the Reformation years of the 16th century to our current time now in the 21st century. In short, however, one of the main points I make in the commentary is that what happened during the English Reformation during the time of King Henry VIII was very bridal and typified through a Mary and an Elizabeth. His divorce from Catherine of Aragon meant divorcing the church in England from the church in Rome, and this brought great trauma to the bride. King Henry VIII's actions were not without severe consequence because when his successor, Queen Mary I, came to the throne in 1553, I believe the Lord decreed a period of 400 years would pass until a new reformation would begin. And the chronological progression through this period would be marked by the passing of six queens. And so it was that a prophetic clock began ticking when Queen Mary I came to the throne in 1553. Then precisely 400 years later in 1953, Queen Elizabeth II was coronated, becoming the sixth queen regnant and when she died on the 8th of September 2022, it marked the passing of six queens since Henry VIII and the completion of the decree made during the Reformation. In this Quick Bite series, I want to share with you a new decree I heard in my spirit resounding from heaven's court. I will unpack as best I can the revelation and some of its implications for us today with a sense of trepidation because its weight and enormity are held within the fragility of my own earthen vessel frame. This prophetic teaching, I believe, marks a defining moment for the worldwide body of Messiah in all her wonderful expressions and variation. Some may disagree and others take offense, yet I am compelled in all humility to place myself above the parapet to herald this decree from heaven's court. I must proceed, for much is at stake. I pray as you read or listen, your heart will resonate with the mind of the Spirit and the flame ignited never to be extinguished. The most remarkable season of our entire history is now upon us, in which we have nothing else more important, profound, or significant in this hour than what the Spirit is saying to the churches. From the highest court in heaven, it has been decreed, the bride has come of age. Although the writing has been on the ecclesiastical wall for many years, this moment has crept into view quite unexpectedly. And yet, in the foreknowledge of the Heavenly Father, this day had always been determined and written down long before the first dawn casts its light upon a sinless world. As we shall see, the implications of this decree, the bride has come of age, are far-reaching. We've reached a watershed in the history of the church, and now the moment has come, an urgency for the bride to arise charges. It charges the spiritual climate over the nations of the world. 
Even so, these things are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6 to 16. And despite the gravity of the decree, it weighs upon the prophets as it always has to steward the word of the Lord over a nation. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Amos 3 verse 7. Later in this series, we'll explore the role and responsibility of the prophets in more detail, understanding the vital importance to raise a bridegroom and bride conscious prophetic counsel in every nation of the world. But for now, I want to encourage you, go beyond the veil in your own personal devotion and intimacy with Jesus. Whatever has gone before, whatever situation or circumstance you find yourself in, be assured that the best is yet to come. There's a place of encounter waiting for you beyond the veil. Your past has brought you to where you are right now, but it does not have to determine where you shall be tomorrow. May the word of Messiah quicken your heart and mind to bring restorational truth and his spirit revival with fresh fire. Until next time, God bless you.